Hey everybody, it's Jeremy, and I just wanted to say a little something before we get this week's show underway. The This episode was our 150th, and I wanted to do something a little special and have a returning guest who was actually one of our very first fans way back in the day when we started this uh, 100, you know, 150 episodes ago. Uh, unfortunately, she had some technical issues and ended up having to, we ended up having to use Skype yet again, which I know I've apologized for a couple of times recently. We've had to resort to using it with a bunch of the episodes we've done, both on my show, Abolitionist Abstractions, and here on The Seeds of Liberty, just out of necessity. And I don't really like to use Skype, obviously. I've talked about this a lot in the past. Even though it has improved slightly, unfortunately, the same problem I've run into in a couple of other episodes we ran into here that even though we did a sound check and everybody was pretty leveled out, uh, all of a sudden, like shortly after the show, we actually said, okay, you know, we're going to start the show now, even though I was recording the entire thing, uh, you know, the whole way through, all of a sudden the guest's volume just spikes as soon as we start the show and it threw everything off. And there was the background noise that I had gotten down to almost a minimum before we started was a lot more pronounced during the first six, the first six minutes, especially. So, it, it, but believe me, it was the, res, the, the original was much worse, which is why I opted to go with these slightly tinny sounds sound of removing these removing the noise from that first six minute section um it does improve after that the uh the the noise level apparently dropped on its own again <laughs> for for no for no apparent reason uh after that and then uh taking the noise uh removing the noise from that only really affected our guest and did not affect the rest of us so and and you know you'll hear us talk about it on the beginning of the show and you know andre wasn't even going to join us because his computer was all screwed up for some reason just before the show and then he was able to join us anyway so i do apologize you know i've mentioned many times before we really do try to st- strive for good audio quality as well as good content here and you know it's been a pet peeve of mine and i've been really trying to work on that and and trying to keep us uh you know as as good as we can but sometimes things are unavoidable and like i said i I really wanted to have uh have our guest mandy come back on to to talk especially about the situation that she's going to talk you're going to hear her talk about that she's been going through from the through the last year and a half or so um since since we've had her on last and, uh, you know, I, I thought it was nice to do for the 150th, especially after like, you know, after our 100th episode, we had we had Danilo come back. Um, you know, I think I thought for the 150th, this, this would kind of be nice. So once again, I do apologize, but, you know, it is what it is. I did the best I could with it. But realistically, um, you know, you guys won't be hearing this for a couple of weeks from the time I actually record this, because for once we're actually ahead on recordings. Um, but part of that being ahead uh, was the fact that we actually recorded two shows today, and this is also the, being recorded the same day that I had my latest court appearance. And actually, by the time this comes out, I may have been had another court appearance by then. That's a whole other story, but it's just been a really long day for me, folks. And I also still have to record a video uh, for that I've been, you know, for my court update, which I already tried to do twice today and had technical issue technical difficulties with that and because of the episode that we recorded before this one that you guys will have already heard by the time this one comes out with Anthony Samaroff uh, you will have heard me tell him in that episode that because of you know everything he inspired me to do by me reading his book uh, I was actually going to go do some yoga that night and well I'm still talking on that night so I got to go do some yoga after this too so you know what like I said it is what it is uh, I promise we will try to get better again next week but uh thank you everybody for continuing to listen thank you to all of our patrons um and everybody else out there uh you know i think uh, as we, as i mentioned in last week's show yeah, you know, we keep doing this, you know, especially me, I keep doing this because I, I keep finding that there's people out there that it's making a difference for. So, you know, that means the world to me. And I, I really appreciate that. So once again, thank you, everybody for listening. And despite the problems, please enjoy this show. Peace. Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. 
Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's server so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. Form, you have to send it to this address, to this person. Like, you have to put this number on the form. Um, but yeah, it was it was really quick once um, once everything went to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, once, a, once it was out of the hands of the U.S. government, you, you could, you'd be amazed at how fast things can work. <laughs> We're just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. And welcome to the 150th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy. I'm joined this week again by Shane. What's up, Shane? Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, we did have Andre here with us. Unfortunately, he's having some weird computer voodoo, and his his vo- trying to re- reduce the volume on his uh, computer is literally it's fighting him and turning the volume back up, and it was just too out of control. So we had to boot Andre for the night. Unfortunately, he was going to be here, but that's okay. Hopefully, we'll you know we'll get that sorted out next week. Anyway. Uh, for the 150th episode, uh, we actually have a returning guest uh, who has reminded me quite often recently that it's been two years since we've had her on, uh, but uh, it, it kind of worked out nicely that this is the 150th episode, and after our 100th epi- episode where we had Danilo come back, I figured it was only fitting that we had a uh, you know a returning guest and uh, a former, well... I guess maybe she's still a fan. I hope she's still a fan. But uh, one of our one of our first fans of our show, uh, Mandy Silva, is back with us. Hey, Mandy. Hey, it's Mandy Bell now. Oh, Mandy <laughs> Bell. That's right. I keep forgetting. I have to change that. Miss, yeah. Miss Married Woman. Um, yes. Anyway, um, uh, before we get too far into things, uh, I know the sound quality on this one may be a little off. Mandy, of course, uh, we have to use Skype to talk to her, and she doesn't have a microphone. But we're going to forgive her for that because she has been, you know, she's been one of the people we've known the longest with this podcast. One of the first people who came to us and said that we had any, any kind of impact on her whatsoever. So, uh, like I said, I thought it was fitting that we bring her back. So, anyway. Uh, well, a lot's happened in the last two years <laughs> since we talked to you last on the show. Yeah. Um, I have discussed quite often the fact that uh, I'm trying desperately to get the hell out of New York and move to actually, in the in the long run, be closer to you because you know we right. wa- we want to do some we want to do some work together in the future. We got big plans and stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, but uh, other than that, uh, I mean, I can't even remember two years ago what the heck we talked about. But one of the, I, I actually have been wanting to have you on anyway. Like I know we've been joking about it back and forth, but because of the situation that you've had to go through for the past I don't know how long it's been now but with your now husband who's here uh, the, the good old Kiwi Matt uh, the, the immigration process and getting him a visa and all that crap in order to get him here you guys had quite an ordeal and I, I figured uh, it would be a good topic for our show uh, so uh, why don't you uh, why don't you fill our, our audience in on uh, what the hell you guys had to go through in order to get that man here <laughs> Yeah, so um, it's been about a year and a half that we've been dealing with it. Uh, Well, so we met about a year and a half ago. Um, And (laughs) it probably sounds like a lot less than the process actually was when I talk about it, just because there was so much waiting in between. Um, But we met in October. Um, Things happened pretty quickly. Um, I know... 
I probably get judged for it, but probably December of 2016 was when we really started talking about the possibility of um, him moving here. Um, I have two kids here. Their dad is here. So me um, moving out of the country really wasn't something that was feasible or is feasible, um, although it would be nice. Um, but Matt's from New Zealand. And um, so we started talking about it and we started looking into visa options. And um, <clears throat> we knew we wanted to be together. And um, we looked into the family visas, the work visas. Um, the work visas seem to be pretty difficult because you have to have um, an employer willing to sponsor you. And, you know, he's not, he's a, he is a laborer, so there's nothing like huge or anything that we thought would be an easy go-to to get him here. Um, the family visas, we looked into the spousal visa and we looked into the fiancé visa. Um, because we, like I said, we knew we wanted to spend our lives together. Um, well, <laughs> I don't know about, I don't know if we knew it at that point, but it was an idea that, that, you know, we tossed around. So, um, we looked at both of those and we compared them and, um, basically for the spousal visa, there's a process and the fiance visa, it's the same process, but after the actual him getting here. So you would, you would just change, like do a change of status and apply for all of the same things that you would with the spousal visa. So it is a little bit more work and a little bit, um, more, it's more money. Um, it's all about the money. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but we decided to go with the fiance visa because the average wait time on that was six months as opposed to the spousal visa being a year. Um, and like looking back on it, you know, a year um, and six months doesn't really seem like that much of a difference, but we actually ended up waiting a total of a year after applying. So, and it, it was a long time and I can't imagine have, having to have done that for even longer um, so one of the stipulations with the fiance visa, basically you have to prove that you have a quote unquote legitimate relationship. And, you know, that, that was really nerve wracking to have to like pour our lives out, um, and have someone else decide whether or not our relationship is worthy of us living together. Um, I've actually thought about, you know, documenting this in videos. I just never have gotten to it just because it's just so much state interference in your, like your very, very personal life. Um, I remember I had to write a letter, um, during the initial process. Um, I had to write a letter just discussing how we met, um, discussing our relationship, just kind of letting them know, yes, this is a legitimate relationship. And, um, we made a joke about like sending sending a picture of us having sex or something <laughs> like that, just because it's like, all right, how much more like you how, can you really like tell us or no, you're not in a relationship if you get those kinds of pictures. Ouch. But <laughs> um, oh, actually, hold, hold, to... Mandy, hold on one second. Right. For some okay. reason, for some reason, your volume is all of a sudden improved. So Shane, I'm going to need you to crank back up again, buddy, because now I can't <laughs> hear you. <laughs> Uh, anyway, right. crank back to where, where you were to begin with, Shane. F forget that All I right. said anything originally. Just pretend that never happened. Anyway, continue, Mandy. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, Andre is asking if he can join then. Uh, you know what? Uh, well, Andre's really loud, but he's sure. Oh, okay. Hop on in, Andre. Let's see. We'll figure it out. We're going to this. We're Hey, we're doing it live. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is live? No. I, no. Uh, just an, oh, okay. It's just an expression. <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. it's a figure. It's a figure of speech. It's yeah. Speech. Hey, Andre. So Andre's here now. Well, whatever. We're just going to work with the volumes we have. I'll <laughs> I'll fix it in post. Anybody who has a problem with this audio, I'll kiss my ass. Everything everything can be fixed in post, <laughs> but what, not everything. That's what I like to think. But we'll see. Anyway, so sorry, Mandy. Continue. Where were you? <laughs> yeah. So sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place. But um, wait, one of the stipulations with the fiance visa is that you have to prove that you've met in person. Um, and it's within two years of applying, which, I mean, obviously that wasn't an issue because we had just met. So I booked a ticket um, to go out there 
Um, I went in March of 2017 and the, I brought all the paperwork, I printed it all out beforehand. The plan was to work on it together while I was there. Um, I was there for a week. Uh, <laughs> paperwork wasn't really the, the main focus of our visit. So um, we didn't really do any, any, we didn't even look at the paperwork while I was there. So I came home and immediately started working on that paperwork um, because what I have to do is I have to sponsor him. I have, as a U.S. citizen, you have to sponsor somebody to come over here. Um, so it's just, I mean, it was just a ton of paperwork. Um, and lots of waiting. My, <laughs> lots of waiting. So, But that first initial, it was a packet. Um, I would probably say it was... Um, between a quarter and a half an inch thick, the packet that I sent <laughs> to start, um, I had to, like I said, I had to do the letter. We both had to write a letter stating, um, that we intended to marry each other. And the other stipulation is that once he comes to the country, we had to get married within 90 days. <clears throat> hmm. Um, yeah, so we both had to ma write a letter stating that we were intending to marry each other within that 90 days of him coming here. Um, you know, legally, I think by that time we considered ourselves married. <laughs> We're willing to go through that together. Well, yeah, um, I, hope, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it took, it took me, um, a full month to do the paperwork because we had, there was something that I had to have his actual signature on and, um, so he ended up having to mail it to me, which in hindsight, I'm like, why didn't I just sign it myself? But that didn't happen. <laughs> now, now um, <laughs> you wouldn't want to break the law. I, Forgery's we, a we crime, really Mandy. <laughs> yes. And we did everything by the book. I know you always talk about like, you have your line in the sand and our line in the sand was, we're not, he's not going to be deported once he's here. So <laughs> no, I, really, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we really, we, we, you know, dotted our eyes and crossed our T's and whatever that saying is. Um, and so we, the average time was six months. So we expected for him to be here um, late, early fall. Early yeah, I fall remember that. Last year. <laughs> um, but the time came and passed. Um, we were actually starting to lose hope. Um, I thought that I didn't know. I well, thought we there's a, there, there, right there's now. a, there's a time limit, right? You guys were starting to come closer to running up on the time that, that we, you were no. going to have to start all over again. Right. Well, uh, not on that part. There's oh. not, I mean, that that's just them responding. So you have to apply first through the department of Homeland security. Um, and then they received our paperwork May 1st. Um, so that's, that's when we came up with, okay, probably by the end of October, he'll be here. Um, but the end of October, I mean, all of that time came and they never told us anything. They never, um, you know, uh, uh, there's, and there's steps in the process. They call it the NOA notice of action. Um, and they said about three months after they receive it, we would receive the first NOA, um, or the second, cause that's the first NOA is that they received it. And the second NOA is that they've approved, they've said, okay, this is a legitimate relationship. Now we're going to send your application to the National Visa Center. Um, that's in New York. And Ooh, I'm not really sure what, I'm not really sure what they do with that other than forwarding it to the consulate in the other country. Um, but well, so, a, mid, a middleman for the middleman. That makes perfect sense. I mean, that's, exactly. what, that's what government's <laughs> really good at making sure every making sure there's extra stops along the way. So everybody has busy right. work. Right. Mid so, middlemen are literally the bread and butter of government. Yeah, Without yeah. them, there wouldn't be a government. <laughs> <laughs> very true, Andre. Very true. Oh, man. Well, that's rough. I mean, I mean, like you said, the, unfortunately, the, the biggest issue was the waiting thing. And I mean, I know that all too well in my own situations in dealing with the, the you know, legal system and whatnot, right. that it's always, you know, the it's just waiting. And even when you've done exactly what you guys did, which is like jumping through every hoop they put in front of you, making sure that you followed every step, because, you know, as you said, I mean, as anarchist we you know we kind of scoff at the the government laws most of the time but when you're in this type of position yeah that's a threat i mean you're you're not bringing him here to be you know just to 
marry him to get him in the country and then you know whatever like you know plenty of people try to take advantage of the system like this is a legitimate thing so you're you need to make sure that there's not going to be a, a t- although you know with the government you never know there could always be a time that they just go well we're just gonna rip this up anyway but <laughs> but for right. the most part you you have to be sure i mean that it 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 you know it's it's it runs counter to what i know a lot of people think and even may say and i've you know said stuff like that in the past too but when it comes down to it just like Ben Stone talks about it in his book, if you're going to be going up against government at any point in time, then you best make sure that you're uh, that you have all your proper paperwork in line because it makes you less of a target. You know? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And uh, in, in this position, yeah, you, you you know you bring somebody into the country, even if you do it the legal way. Of course, you know you don't want to risk him all of a sudden just like one day get a knock on your door, be like, oh, you guys forgot this. He's got to go home now, and you got to start all over again. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's still a risk. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so, like, even even with going through all of the proper routes, there's still that that question of whether or not it's going to, you know, are they going to come back one day and just be like, well, we're deporting everyone. <laughs> you know? Like, you don't, you don't know what they can do. But, like, yeah, if you've got everything done legally, you're less of a target, just like you said. Um, but even still, okay, so after we, we filed that paperwork, we waited that three months. That three months came and passed because we were waiting for that that notice. Um, we finally got a notice in November and they wanted more information. Um, basically they wanted a page that I didn't scan because I didn't think I needed it. Um, it was the, the front page of my passport. Um, so I sent my entire passport, I copied my entire passport book and sent that. So there was <laughs> no question. Every, every single page front and back, just to be sure. I did. In triplicate. It was like, <laughs> it was like 25 or I think it was actually 40 pages. Um, and, uh, so then they, they told me that like in the letter when they approved it, so, so they approved it and they said, okay, we're going to send this to the national visa center. Um, if you don't hear back in 30 days, you can make an inquiry, um, via email. So after 30 days, I inquired about it and they said, if you haven't waited six weeks, please wait six weeks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I waited those extra two weeks, and I still didn't hear back. And I sent my inquiry. I never heard back. Um, I think I sent an inquiry every couple of weeks. And then in January, I think it was January 7th or 8th or something like that, we I got an email from the Auckland consulate asking me to forward this humongous, long email to my fiance and it was more of the same paperwork. <laughs> we had to go online. It took us three hours one day um, because Matt doesn't have a computer. He's not very computer literate, really. <laughs> well, neither am I, so um, we won't hold that against him. <laughs> I mean, they're they're kind of behind tech technologically, I think, as far as that kind of stuff goes over in New Zealand. Um, I saw him on his dad's computer and it looked ancient, but <laughs> we won't get into that. Guys rock, um, guys rocking a Commodore 64 over there and shit, you know? <laughs> well, I mean like it's so weird because they're, they're isolated. So some of their stuff is like ahead, I would say, but some of their stuff is just really behind. Um, well, that's that's usually the case, and well, that's always been the case, like spread out around the world. Like you know, you, there's always yeah. jokes about different countries, like you know, like the Eastern European countries that were living the '80s dream that we had, like in the early 2000s or whatever it was. You know, <laughs> like every, yeah, all, all stuff like that. That that that, t- that tends to happen. I actually don't know much about New Zealand, uh, although I, I've always been told I would probably like it there if I went. But um, it's pretty socialist. Uh, it's really expensive. Out I, there. I meant the I meant the scenery, not the people, not the not, ce- not, yeah, the not, not the politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't see like a huge difference in their politics. They have uh, more socialized healthcare, um, and you know their their currency is pretty inflated. So, um, well, welcome to the welcome to the world of government. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but actually, when I was over there, um, I thought we were going to jail. Um, because their their cops are so much different than ours. They don't carry guns, um, oh. and they're kind of a joke over there. <laughs> like the, the regular citizens consider them a joke, whereas here, if you treated them the way that they do over there, well, wait a minute, the, uh, hold on. The the cops don't carry guns, but there there is a gun population. Like they they're not banned like they are in Australia, right? Do I, I have that? Do I remember remember that correctly? That New Zealanders do no, have they their are guns. Banned. 
Oh, they're banned in New Zealand too. Okay. I, th I think like um, hunting hunting rifles might be okay there, but yeah, they're not allowed to have handguns. <clears throat> oh, for some reason um, I thought they for some reason I thought they were the opposite in, in many ways of Australia, but I guess I was wrong. No, no, but um, what happened was so Matt was driving on a learner's license. Um, he was driving me around on a learner's license, so he's supposed to have a licensed driver in the vehicle when he's driving. Um, he got pulled over going probably 20, I think it was 20 kilometers over the speed limit. I swore we were going to jail because <laughs> this, <laughs> this cop comes up and he comes to my window and I'm just sitting there like shaking <laughs> and I'm like, do you want me to record? And he's like, no, he's like, just settle down. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how we do and, <laughs> things here. <laughs> um, so this, this cop is just like joking with him about things and, um, He's like, Matt told me they start with like 100 points on their license. So it's kind of opposite of what we do here. They start with 100 points and then each infraction you get like so many taken off. Well, he was down to something like 9 or 10 points. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the speeding ticket was going to cost him like 6 points. And this cop is like, well, you know, like if you, if you, if this happens again, you're going to lose your license. I thought we were going, if that stuff happened here, if I was driving on a permit with an unlicensed driver in my vehicle, I would be on the ground. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know how we got out of that. Because <laughs> you weren't here. That's exactly why you got out of I know. Of <laughs> I know. But I was so scared and he just laughed at me. Well, um, yeah, but I can imagine. I mean, I, I can imagine that if you've, you know, been the first time in another country, the first time you're right. dealing with their police, especially when you come from the U.S. and you're right. used to the, you know, you're used to the way police are here. Well, sure, it can. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I would automatically be. I mean, although if you know the guy was joking with with the per with the person who's from there, I might feel a little more at ease. But yeah, definitely at the initial the initial contact, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I'm in a foreign country. These are cops. I don't know what goes on. Yeah, and he actually, he asked me if I had a driver's license, and I said, I have a U.S. driver's license, and he was just like, oh, yeah, see, you probably, he's like, do you feel comfortable driving? I thought he was going to ask me to drive out of there, and I was like, uh, yeah, sure, because <laughs> I thought he was going to say I had to drive, um, yeah. but he, he let us drive away, and did Matt he, was in the driver's seat. Did, so. he, did, did he give him the ticket, though? <laughs> Yeah, he did get a ticket. Uh, yeah, but that's, see, a, that's the catch. Uh, but but so but but he managed to get out of the country before he ran out of points, right? So he's all right. <laughs> yeah. So that so that was a year ago. Oh, <laughs> wait, a minute, like wait a minute. Did he lose the license after that? Hold on. No, he actually he got he got out of the country with all those points still on his license. Wow. Yeah. Um. He actually got into. I don't know if I should be saying this. Well, he got into an accident. Um. It was one day. I. I I don't remember where he was going, but he was really anxious. Um, I think it had something to do with um, the the visa. He was doing something with the visa, and he just he's he had really high anxiety. And I told him before he got in the car, I said, "Do not get into an accident." And he got into an accident. And oh, so it's your so fault. Then, Good job. Then man. <laughs> it was really awful because we're thinking that. He's going to go to jail because it was his fault. Um, he was driving on a learner's license that probably would have taken his points away. But um, he kind of like pled his case to the person he uh, ran into and they didn't end up calling the cops. So he lucked out. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> wow. Yeah, he did. Um, well, that does happen every once in a while. I learned yeah. I, even here. I learned that a couple of years ago. I, I had an incident where I was on my way to one of my stops uh, when I was still working, and there was a bunch of it was it was a road that was only supposed to be twenty five miles to begin with, but somebody up in the head of this line was only doing like between they were uh, fluctuating between twenty two and like and eleven for like no reason whatsoever, and a bunch of people ended up stopping short, and a couple people ran into each other, and the guy I hit, of course, had like the most expensive car in the line, and like oh. right away, I'm just like, I am so fucked. <laughs> like, of course, I, of course, I hit this idiot, and he comes storming out of the car all pissed off, and like for once in my life, I actually tried to be calm and like actually have a like try to have a r rational conversation with this guy, and for some reason, like that day, it happened to work.
York. And uh, he, he was just like, yeah, I don't want to deal with the cops either. I'm like, all right, great. Let's go take care of this person. It was the best experience, best car accident experience I ever had because I ended up paying like $400 out of pocket and I was thrilled because even, nice. if, my, even if my insurance had covered it, I still would have had to pay the deductible, which would have been more than that. So... <laughs> And then you your know, insurance it, costs go up. And- exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not only that, but you're you're handling things, uh, handling things between private people, which I right. personally that's just invaluable. I actually uh, ended up being out of pocket because I accidentally backed up into somebody's car. I didn't see them behind me because there was a blind spot in my A pillar or my B pillar, I don't know, whichever one is in the rear, um, and I ended up backing into their car, and that set me out because of where it hit their car where I ended up denting their car that set me out about $1,300, but I was eminently pleased to pay them $1,300 to fix their car and not deal with insurance or anybody else, because that's how you're supposed to handle things in a private property society. You fuck something up, the person gets an estimate on how much it's going to cost to fix it and you pay to fix it. Problem solved, right. pish, pash, bosh. Yeah. I got into an accident last year. I rear ended somebody. It was just a bump. Um, there was no damage to either. Well, no, actually, <laughs> I, um, there was no damage to to her vehicle. I actually slammed on my brakes. I, um, but then I also swerved. Um, I swerved into a like a ditch. <laughs> so there was damage to my vehicle, but like, and she wasn't gonna call the cops. We weren't gonna call the cops. Um, but she was like, I have to go pick up my husband. He's right down the road. Um, she's like, I'll be right back and um, we'll talk about this. While she was gone, a cop came up behind me and oh, not a cop, a, a volunteer firefighter came up behind me and called the police. I'm glad I said volunteer because um, I was about to be triggered. You and firefighters. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you get triggered with firefighters? Oh, do you, you don't, do you, you don't do, know? Mandy, do you not remember what happened to me last year? <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't put things together often. That's Sorry. okay. Sorry. So anyway, so so a volunteer firefighter, volunteer fighter, fire, which by the way, I am yeah. a big fan of, I've said that many times. Anyway, continue. So he pulls up behind We you. have a lot of those here. I think um, the township I live in, um, the fire department is completely volunteer. Well, I have them here too. That was my whole point originally when everything happened with me is that I'm actually a paying a, a voluntarily, I, I voluntarily pay the volunteer fire department every time they show yeah. up at my door. Like that was the whole thing. Yeah. But anyway, so this guy pulls up behind you. Yeah, he, he pulls up behind me and he's like, well, I called 911 and they're going to be here. So I, that ended up having to be dealt with through the insurance. And, um, but that person, they must have, they must have been driving without insurance or something. Cause they never they came back wrong cause they, they didn't come back <laughs> um, <laughs> either that or they drove by and saw the cop there and <laughs> left. So, which was fine. They, like, like I said, there was nothing, no damage to their car, but they're asking me, who I hit and they're like, I see some gray paint up here. Was it a gray car? And I'm just like, yeah, I think it was a gray. I just like told them the least amount of information I could. Cause I'm like, it doesn't even matter who they were. You know, they weren't injured. Their car was fine. Like, I don't understand. Well, it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to any rational person, but to the, to the, you know, to the police officer, their whole thing is, well, we have to go investigate now. Um, Cause you know, somebody could be ro- doing wrong somehow, some way. <laughs> right. Cause they would, you know, pro- I was, they would probably try to ring her up for leaving the scene of an accident just to get a ticket on the, you know, under their belt. Basically. Yeah, probably. Um, so I was listening to the radio this morning on my way to work and um, I get Chicago radio where I live and they were talking about, I guess, as of the 15th of April, um, tax day, the, isn't that tax day or it used to be tax day. It's not tax day anymore. Is it? They move it around. Something like that. Yeah. Everybody gets extensions these days, so it's not really clear anymore. Um, well in Chicago in certain counties in Chicago, if you get pulled over, um, with suspicion, if you refuse a breathalyzer, when there are suspicions of you driving drunk, they will get an immediate, um, electronic warrant issued and they can send you immediately to go have blood have taken. a blood test completed yeah that's, that's it's insane well i was yeah you're about to say it's insane but that's actually something that was floated a, a years ago people kept people were talking about that and everybody poo pooed it as a conspiracy theory but that's been happening in a that i think tennessee was the first place they started doing that a few years back yeah unfortunately that's becoming a real thing 
they they really do. They will they will forcibly take your blood from you. Yeah. So basically, and they were saying if you get pulled over and you refuse a breathalyzer, you're automatically getting a DUI. Uh, well, we we don't call it the just us system for nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Uh, but that's you know, like I said, unfortunately, it's not unheard of. It's becoming more popular with these people. The DUI laws are so ridiculous anyway, because I, yeah. I mean, at least every any time I've ever paid attention to a particular area where, you know, where I've tried to look into the numbers about stuff like this, it always managed to the people that end up getting locked up for, over it and actually like being severely punished for it are the ones who were caught drinking, who weren't drunk, who just like, ba- like barely cleared the limit of like, whatever ridiculous arbitrary limit was set in that particular area. So, you know, they they could have very well been perfectly fine to drive. Those are the ones who end up getting locked up. But the people with like 26 DUIs who still manage to keep getting back on the road and doing all these things and end up killing people, those are the ones who just can continue to do it. So just like every other government program, it works backwards. It punishes the, Look, it punishes the better good people and the, the quote unquote bad people get away with it. <laughs> it's all a matter of confidence. If you approach the cops confidently, this is something I learned from the army. Confidence is key. Always be confident. Even if you are drunk off of your ass, approach them confidently. They can sense fear. They're like they're like German shepherds. Yeah. <laughs> they can sense they're like wolves. They can sense fear. If you have no fear, then nine times out of ten you can just pass on through, even if you were just drunk off of your ass. Really? Sure. Confidence, man. I'm telling you, confidence makes all the difference in the world. So it I doesn't guess- make you right, but it <laughs> allows you to pass through what you're trying to get through. So in Chicago now, you could potentially get a DUI even if you're completely sober. Yep. Yes. Wow. Seems like it. If if you just decide to say no, I don't want to. I, I refuse to take a test. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, I mean, you know, tyranny gets kind of old saying that. I mean, <laughs> is, is there really a, any other kind of government at this point? They're all tyrannical. But yeah, that's just insane. But yeah, this is the level we've reached. This is where this is becoming. And in Chicago, of all places, I mean, they have enough problems. Now, now they're gonna, now they're gonna try to lock up people. I mean, although unfortunately, well, people actually may be safer in some of those jails than they are in some of the streets in Chicago. So, since they're all disarmed except for the uh, the, the gang members who don't care, <laughs> both, both the ones employed by the government and the ones that aren't, the uh, you know people are in danger of losing their lives on a daily basis anyway. They may actually be safer in jail, sadly. But uh, yeah, leave it to a. Uh, well, I mean, it also makes sense because, I mean, look at Chicago. Look how, I mean, and look look at the state of Illinois. Uh, like how, like, unbelievably, like, behind on money, like, in debt they are to the point where they, you know, pension or get, pension things are getting destroyed or whatever, which I'm not exactly opposed to. I, you know, think those, uh, the public pension pro- uh, programs are horrible, but uh, they have, the, they don't have any money to pay for anything. So, of course, they've, they have to come up with any possible way to generate revenue. And this right. is just another way, because you, if you can lock up, you know, you lock people up for D, DUIs, you know what else you get? You get their fucking car. <laughs> and true. And then it's you can true. auction that off. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it, may, it sadly makes sense in the current system, especially in a I place remember, like Chicago. I remember a long time ago before I crossed over the Anarchy Bridge, um, I remember seeing in the news how, because they started putting up those, um, you know, the cameras. Um, I don't know when they started putting them up, but they've been there probably as long as I've had a driver's license. What, the red light um, cameras or just the cameras yeah, in general? Yeah, the, okay. the red light cameras. And um, I remember seeing in the news like a particular intersection where they were like really losing um, revenue because people knew that the camera was there. So they were driving, uh, they were driving, like they were stopping at it. And like that just shows like this is not to keep people safe because they're complaining about this. It's, they're complaining yeah. about people driving safely and stopping safely at red light <laughs> because they're losing revenue. Well, yeah, I, I, I wish more of them were losing revenue because people, more people actually realize that you don't have to pay those stupid things. Yeah. They're not actually enforceable <laughs> even by their own twisted laws. 
<laughs> because in at least as far as I know, every, well, I mean, I know it's that way um, here in Long Island, which way back when we had the guy who's known as the red light Robin Hood. Um, what the heck was that guy's yes. name? Um, oh, gosh. I, I don't remember, but I know who you're talking yeah, about. I forget his name. Steven something um, yeah. who lives out here who was doing all that stuff. And we tried to tell him at the time, like, dude, you, you know, you can just ignore him, right? You don't have to pay him. <laughs> And uh, he just didn't want to hear that because he wanted so badly to he he wanted so badly to fight through the system and and you know go you know use the system against the system type of thing and I was just like no dude you could just ignore it but um, yeah as far as I know it's the same everywhere which is also pretty much one of the reasons that they, it's anytime it's actually gone to court they've all been struck down mm-hmm. every every case I've ever heard of where these red light cameras have come up uh, in court they've all but the courts end up even the courts end up striking them down as like unconstitutional or whatever it is and all it takes is somebody actually making the argument I mean once again if you're gonna within the status paradigm which is where we live so you sometimes you have to play by these rules of if, if you want to do things um, but as far as I know every, every case I've heard of well I mean I know every case I've heard of but as far as I know that's all the cases out there they just keep getting knocked down it's just a matter of somebody actually fighting it and saying, "Oh yeah, we you, these things are unconstitutional." Somebody actually has to make a case against that. But otherwise, you don't have to pay these fucking things. Right? They're. Uh, Do you know if that's the same for the toll the toll cameras? That I think is actually different. Um, I don't know what that that falls under uh, exactly. I, I can't even remember how it works here in New York. But I, I mean, I know it is for the the red light thing because they're all. You know, if you, if you actually, because anybody who's ever tried to fight these things even on their own, you can you can end up beating them by proving that you know either depending on how the judge wants to take it, either the you know you don't get to face your defend your accuser route, mm-hmm. um, or the fact that uh, it's actually a third party who owns these things and controls these things, therefore they don't have the juris they don't have not the jurisdiction. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Legal man, Andre. Um, <laughs> what are I don't understand. What are you getting at? Uh, the, 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 the company that owns and operates these cameras is a, thir- is a third party. They're not actually a government agency. And they're almost always controlled from a company out of state. Um, and because of this, they actually run afoul of the, you know, the, the way the system's supposed to work, uh, of it not, you know, a, they, they, they can't make the threats that they actually make. Like here we get. Well, the- right, right. Because they're only engaged as a, as a third, they're, they're engaged as a third party, uh, contractual agency providing a service to the police department. The police department are actually the ones that are the ones illegally allowed to utilize the police powers of a state. So they can't contract that out to a third party. The state can't delegate police powers to non-state actors. Yes. Yeah, that's thank you. That's what it is. Um, yeah, with the toll ones, I think, uh, to, to get back to your question, Mandy, I, I believe the toll ones, at least I know here in New York, they're controlled by the state. They're, you know, they're state entities. Uh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that they would actually say, yeah, F you, we can come after you for that <laughs> because, you know. Yes, you're- I was just curious because probably a little over a year ago, I drove through the. I drove through some of them, knowing I didn't have the electronic. Um, it's called the iPass here. Um, I didn't have it, but I didn't have money either, so I just drove through it. And I was like, "Well, I'll just wait till they send me a bill, and I'll send it in then." And I've never gotten it. Well, <laughs> so you may have slipped through the yeah. cracks. Who knows? Yeah. What um, happens? But I also I've heard that they wait until you've racked up like so much before they'll send it to you. Oh, well, I mean, depending on what the limit is, that shouldn't be too hard. Like someplace like here, like it's like 12 or 13 bucks to get just to get over the bridge. So <laughs> they probably like one of them. It's like, oh, that's enough. <laughs> we're sending oh. we're sending them after you for one for one ticket because it's 13 bucks. Oh, no, well, it's probably actually, 12 bucks for me to get to like the north side of Chicago. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just talking about like the, I think the George Washington Bridge is up to like 13 bucks. And I think that's that's just that's one great. way. And that's if you have an easy pass. I think I think if you if they if you if you if they have to send you a ticket, I think, of course, they tack on additional surcharges and stuff like that so then i think yeah. it's actually it ends up being like a 25 dollar ride over a bridge uh <laughs> wow good, good times good times any wonder why i want to get the fuck out of this place i think the last time i visited new york i took the lincoln tunnel and that was like six bucks at the time yeah i haven't been through the lincoln in forever but it's, it's definitely got to be higher than that now because i mean i remember i remember we used to drive up here as a you know when i was a kid i was i was born here but then my parents moved out to jersey and then pennsylvania like shortly after i was born so i grew up down in pa and we used to travel back up here to visit my family and i remember all the way back then coming up every time and crossing over the george washington back then it was like it was already up to like five or six bucks 
<laughs> or maybe four uh, way back in the eight, late 80s when I could start remembering. But um, but yeah, it's it's been high ever. I know since ever since I moved here, it went from seven and then all of a sudden it started climbing in a hurry. <laughs> And uh, and of course, the joke always is, I don't think they charge you on the way out. It's when you want to get back in from Jersey to get away from the stench that they charge you the <laughs> fucking money because it really does smell right there. It does. Yeah, that's what because that's where all the 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 the, the, the garbage dumps. And uh, I think it's there's sulfur plants over there, too. Um, there's just a bunch of crap in that industrial zone right over the bridge. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're like, yeah, you want to come back in? Pay. <laughs> And most of the time, you're all too happy to do so. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. So, um, I don't even know how we ended up getting on this conversation of car insurance. And all this there's driving and there's no all this telling. Stuff. We were talking about accidents and traffic. <laughs> oh, stuff, that's right. So we, I'm not surprised. That's right. We were talking about, we started with, you started with Matt's story of an accident. Then we shifted on to other things. Um, so, yeah. So, but now to, to fast forward. So obviously you guys finally got through the whole thing and now he's here and you guys, you guys didn't even, you guys didn't need the 90 days. You were married like less than two weeks after he hit, hit the, hit the, hit the uh, soil here again. Didn't you? Weren't you? Or yep. even less than that? Yeah. Just about two weeks. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. Uh, um, it really, the reason we did it that way is because we were originally going to do just like a courthouse wedding. And then after I thought about it, I just, I felt like we should celebrate it because, it's true love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but uh, we ha- I had a planned vacation. Um, the kids were on spring break from their um, from prison, and uh, <laughs> from prison. my sister in law um, she she teaches as well, and she's in Colorado, and um, she was able to make it out for that time. And um, so yeah, we got actually my brother came um, from Colorado. She came from Colorado. Um, we had a friend from Florida come in. It was really nice. Um, we had a couple of people, you know, a couple of our anarchy um, loved yes. ones come in. So that yeah, was, that was, was really good. I was really bummed I couldn't make it. I really wanted to, but obviously with my situation, <laughs> yeah. I was still kind of grounded here. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, at, at least there's there's a happy ending for now that you finally made it. But yeah, it just... I f- there I, is, but it doesn't end. Like So now that oh, we're married, I have to get all of... Well, I'm still working on... I have to get my social security card changed. Um, then we got to apply for... Well, I just got the certificate, the actual marriage certificate. Um, so we've got to apply now for a change in status. Um, and that one... That one's a lot of money. Um, so we might... I don't know. Um, I'm kind of like just taking it one step at a time. But well, now is there, there's a, there's a, is that, is that the same time limit that you have to get that done or is that a, di- do they give you a time limit that you, a different time limit that you have to have that done by otherwise? Um, well, they say to start working on it as soon as possible. His visa expires 90 days after, um, oh, he so, entered. So yeah, so, 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 so it's on the same timeline. It. So it's, yeah, so it's basically yeah. on the same timeline. Okay. So we've got to start it, but even when he gets that, it's only good for two years, and then we have to apply again. Oh, really? I wasn't aware yeah. of that. I, I mean, I guess I should have yeah. assumed that uh, that, that you are never done with the government once you get in bed with yeah. him like that. But uh, yeah, I, I guess that. I mean, I guess that that's how they keep tabs. Now, how long does that? Do, do, do you know? Like, how long does that have to go on? Does that continue? Does that just go on indefinitely every two years, despite the fact that he's uh, married, no, or until not, he? It's not every two years but i think it's every 10 um he'll have to renew but hopefully um i don't know where we'll be you know because after so after the two-year one then then the next one is a 10-year one i think that's when he would apply for citizenship as well oh okay um, if, yeah of if course, he yeah. wants to i don't know if he'll do that i have no idea um we've talked about me going over there to have babies um because it would be paid for. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, geez. Yeah, why not? Yeah, go go milk the socialist system for all. I mean, work. okay, so I have to <laughs> I have to have insurance, right? Um, otherwise, I get charged at the end of the tax year. Um, but my insurance is really. Oh, wait awful. a minute! I thought all, I thought all Donny Boy was getting rid of that for everybody. Did that? Not, yeah, no. Did so that not it happen? doesn't start till next year. <laughs> oh, that's so right. This year, this year you're still charged. Um, so my insurance. Um, it's got a relatively low premium for myself, but once I add Matt to it, it's pretty high premium, like more than I can afford. Um, and the deductible oh, yeah, dog. Is, is about four thousand um, dollars. They don't. They have like I think one preventative appointment. Um, 
that is paid for by the insurance, um, but everything else is not covered until I meet that high deductible. So mm. it's like I'm paying a whole bunch of money in premiums to have not enough money to go to the doctor if I get sick. <laughs> um, uh, so, ain't government grand. Yeah. Uh, geez. Get that dog a bone or something, man. What's up with that? How rude. Oh, she's chasing a cat. Hey, now. Can't you see we're recording here, pup? Murder dog would never act like that. I swear. <laughs> Some dog owners are so, so, so bad. Anyway. <laughs> um, well, what was one thing I was going to ask you? Oh, because, I mean, obviously, you guys have gone through this. You know, you go, like we were talking about earlier, you've, you went through, like, every possible process to make sure that you're following everything so that you have the least amount of... I mean, like like you said earlier, there's always a threat of them turning around and saying, "Yeah, we're just t changing the changing the rules now." But up until that point, you're doing everything you possibly can. But I mean, if you didn't have to go through this process, like if you could have gotten him the gotten if he could have come here and managed to get you know, all everything else, like you know, all things being equal, uh, without actually getting the state approved license, uh, the state approved marriage. Uh, would you have not done that? I'm assuming, or no, we, I, we, I would never have gotten married again, um, through the state if, you know, if it wasn't for that. Get down. Not that I don't, you know, want to spend my life with him and you know, want to. Oh, well, like as you said, dude, you didn't want to do, you didn't want to do it through the state because, you know, that's like me. I'm not, I'm not opposed to a marriage per se. I just don't want a state. I don't want a piece of paper from the state saying that I'm married. <laughs> right. A lot of it. <laughs> Although I was just, who was I just talking about that with? Get down. About the fact that I may end up having to do that anyway. Oh, I think it was. I think I was recording an episode that I made with with Kyle last night. Uh, our friend Kyle Turnblazer. Um, yeah, about the fact that if if I if for some reason it, it comes to that, you know, if things end up happening with Jen and the kids later on, that I run into an issue that it's like, well, you're not legally married, so you can't do this. That it's like, yeah, at that point, unfortunately, what choice do I have, right? So right, yeah, no. I, um, my brother and his, um, well, they're not married anymore, but um, they got married. So that he would have rights to his daughters in case something happened to her. Because they they were told that if anything happened to her and they weren't legally married, um, that he would have absolutely no rights until he proved paternity. Yeah, I well, that's the case. I think Jen found a workaround with that. She just put she put them in. She put she put me in their in her will. <laughs> um, as 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 the as the legal, you know, as the next legal, as the next legal guardian to make sure that if anything ever happened, that I so I didn't have to go through that whole thing. Because yeah, I, I don't know, Andre may know better. He's the legal, he's the legal expert on the on this on the team. Um, but I think I that's think it depends I think that's the case. Too. Well, of course, as yeah, location dependent is usually the case with with most government bullshit. But yeah, I know that I'm pretty sure that's the case here. I think, but I think that's the workaround that she found. I believe, if I remember correctly. Um. Now, now, does a will have to be, um, what is it, notarized for it to be recognized? Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. Andre? It w well, actually, what the fuck? I don't know why my volume just spiked, but uh, um, generally speaking, it does, or rather, it does if you don't want it to be in dispute. However, that being said, as long as it is documented, a uh, will is valid legally. You don't have to have it notarized. However, there are plenty of regulations in plenty of different states regarding what constitutes, you know, a valid will and what constitutes an invalid will. However, if you die and there is a document signed by you stating what your last will and testament is, the government generally with regards to your estate will honor the intent of that document. Which is so it, it I mean it has to have it has to have certain verbiage um, I mean, you can't just write on a piece of paper, yada, yada, whatever. Like you have to state that this is your last will and testament, or you have to state that this is your will, uh, governing your estate after you die or some words to that effect. But if you construct a document that you sign, um, that basically declares in so many words that this is what you want to have happen to your estate after your death, um, if that can be presented by somebody, uh, generally speaking, they will attempt to honor it if it's equitable, right? So like if you like, so for example, if, uh, you know, later on the, down the line, when I die, I have a will that I just wrote down on a piece of paper stating, this is my will. I'm bequeathing all of my property to my daughter. 
Um, and somebody comes along and tries to take something of mine and my daughter contests that she can present my will. And yes, it's not notarized, but it is written down and I have signed it. Um, that counts in her favor with regards to resolving the property claim. Does that make sense? Because really what a will, what, what comes down with a will is really resolving property disputes. If nobody dis disputes the will, then it's kind of irrelevant whether or not it's valid, right? And kids are yeah, considered sure. property. What's that? And the kids are considered property then? Mm, no. Oh, okay. no, I don't <laughs> no, no, I, no, I, I get what you're saying though. Um, that, I mean, that, that, in, that, I mean, my first thought is, well, of course, government would, of course, the courts would actually rule that way because, you know, government wants to make sure they get their, their inheritance tax out, so, so inheritance tax out. So it's like, oh, we found, we found the owner for this stuff. Okay, great. Now we can tax you for it. The estate taxes and whatever. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> they're, they are well inclined to, uh, <laughs> they're well inclined to want to resolve estate disputes so that they can tax the shit out of it. <laughs> See, more like, or less. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, incentives matter, man. Incentives well, matter. Yeah, but the, 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 like when you when you start telling stuff, when you start explaining that situation, it's like at, at first it's like, hey, finally government's doing something actually right. It's like, oh, never mind. Now we see why. Oh no! <laughs> even, I mean, even when whether, you with whether or not lose. whether or not what they're doing is just and equitable, they have ulterior motives. Yeah, they exactly. always <laughs> have ulterior motives. <laughs> Uh, which of course is the the same exact thing with the the racket that you know Mandy had to go through. With this, oh, yeah, with this whole experience with which, you know, like, I mean, regardless of the, the you know, I, I don't even want to get into a debate about immigration in general, but just like, you know, again, they were doing everything by the book. They were doing the, the, the filing thing. And and unfortunately, the thing that I keep coming back to is the whole waiting thing, because like I empathize with that so much because that's that's what I've been dealing with, you know, whether it's the court system or even just trying to sell my house, you know, <laughs> like that process has been so mind numbingly in, 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 um, insane that, uh, you know, I'm just fried over it because like I, I do everything, everything, everything that's put in front of me, I jump through every hoop like a good little dog. Like I do it like almost right away. <laughs> okay. I, you, I need to do this. Okay. I need to do this. Okay. And then it's like, even when I do all that, I just get told you, you know, okay, just wait, just be patient. It'll come eventually. <laughs> I deal with the court system. I go through it. You know, I show up on, I show up on time. I, you know, I, I do everything I'm supposed to do. I jump through every stupid hoop and the state's allowed to be like, Oh, we're not ready. Oh yeah, we're gonna give you that information. Uh, maybe later. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, all sorts of shenanigans. I don't even want to go down that road because I'm gonna start getting mad because I still have to put out a video about that about my experiences today at court. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah. We can talk about that after the show. Um, I w I'm not gonna get into it here because that'll just uh, yeah. be a really long ass rant. But, um, but yeah. So I, I, like I said, I, I totally empathize with the waiting part, especially because you know when you're told a time frame and. You're like, okay, we did everything we're supposed to do. Now we just wait, and then the time comes. Well, see, here's the thing: the state doesn't actually give you a time frame. They just say they, they they don't give you anything. I had to I researched it, and what I found was that the I found the average. Oh, time. okay, I see, I see. Yeah. All right, see, I was confused about that. That that makes yeah. it even worse because you had to, <laughs> of course, the the legwork you have to put in. <laughs> <laughs> just to figure out what's yeah. going on, you know, again, even though you're following all the rules, you still have to put in extra work. That's just, you know, that's government for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was, I didn't get to the email. It was so hard to navigate that email that was sent. Um, they embedded forms in the text of this email. There was actually a line in the email that said, cut here. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. That <was> so awful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is, that is. I need to find a. Do you have a? Do you have a? Happen to have that email? I would love to. I would love to just just to have that part of it. I would love to use that as, yeah, as the picture for the show. <laughs> yeah, do a screenshot yeah. of that because I want the picture for the show for that. That's just perfect because yeah, that just sums up government right there. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was bad. But once it got to New Zealand, it actually everything went a lot quicker because in New Zealand, they communicated electronically, whereas everything that we did here had to go through mail like every it was it was awful just and that's part of the wait time. Um, but they emailed him. Um, they accepted emails from him. They text him. 
Um, they accepted, to, you know, they accepted that communication as valid. Whereas here, I don't know how much of a fan I am. No, you have to file government. this form. You have to send it to this address to this person. Like you have to put this number on the form. Um, but yeah, it was it was really quick once um, once everything went to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, once it, once it was out of the hands of the U.S. government, you, you could be, you'd be amazed at how fast things can work. <laughs> Well, see, here's the thing. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, the people that he talked to were New Zealanders. They had their, you know, their New Zealand accents. But I don't know. They, I guess, they worked for the U.S. government, though, right? If they're at the consulate, I don't know. I would assume that they're paid from the United States government. Oh yeah, that, I, 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 I guess that's. Well, I, I don't know. Again, uh, I'll defer to Andre. He's the one who's overseas. He's the he, he's the overseas guy, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> Not really, no. The consulates? Um, Who works at the I'm, consulates? I'm, is it a USP? It's US citizens usually, right? Is, is well, that the purpose of a consulate? Well, no, well, uh, well sometimes. Uh, it, it, dep- it all depends. It all depends. Um, I don't know about US labor law regarding consulates, but I know I've been to a Romanian consulate where it wasn't exclusively Romanian citizens working there, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, all right. There I think go. it's but I think it's possible to hire anybody to work there because they're just, I mean, the, essentially they're just employees of the state department, right? Yeah. That, well, that, yeah. That would make yeah. sense. Um, yeah. So I don't know that that is weird, but <laughs> for whatever reason, at least it went smoother over there. I don't know. Well, I, I'm sure it had a lot to do with the fact that they were using, they were using email instead of snail mail, right. which is just, of course, oh, is, without a doubt. which without of course a doubt. is hysterical because you know, the, the, the U S government insists on still being that antiquated, that they make, you know, because this isn't the only instance where they make you go through these processes. There's plenty of other situations where you have to correspond with them through the snail mail in order for them to be, in order for it to be official or whatever. Um, but they insist on doing that. But they they also constantly come out and, and, and try to, you know, drum up sympathy for the fact that the U- USPS is always out of money and stuff. It's like, well, what do you expect, you idiots? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's a horrible system, but you're going to keep using it. And then, you know, you punish the people who don't like, cause I've had situations like that before where I've had to do things like that. And then I've actually like I applications for things in the past where I ended up having to start over because with the assault, the time limits that they set up, like they, they ended up lapsing because I didn't get the information back from them in time. Because I had to wait, like I had to mail it to them and wait to for them it to get to their processing center, and then finally show up at the desk of the person it was supposed to get to, and then by the time they actually get around to sending it back to you, um, you're like you've already missed the deadline, and it's like you fucking bastards. Right? Yeah. Actually, you you asked earlier about um, we were in danger of um, missing our deadline. We actually had to we extended it just in case. I think we we were approved within like two weeks of our deadline because that was when they sent the approval to us. I think we had three months from that approval date for him to get all of the information to them and approved. Um, So I thought we were going to have to start over, but we were, we were able to email them and just ask for an extension. Um, And they, they granted us that, but he ended up getting here before the end of that. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Again, co- but it was because they told us they it. I think was it three months. It might have been four months or three months. Um, but then it took them two months to even move forward with it. So. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like the information that he had to turn in, it wasn't information that we could find online anywhere. Um, we only knew what he had to get from that email that they sent us. <laughs> Well, you know. you know, so we couldn't even like prepare it beforehand. Well, of course, you don't want to cheat or anything. You you have to wait and to go through the process just like everybody else, man. <laughs> yeah, and the the links that were in the email didn't work, so we had to search like the <laughs> phrasing that they used. It was awful. It took us three hours to do one online form. Um, that was the main form that had to be done, but. It, we video chatted for three hours trying to figure out everything that was in there. <laughs> and it was like a lot of it was like repeated information that I just don't understand why they can't forward the information that I've already sent in to <laughs> to the next step. I just, it, because yeah, it was it was pretty bad and we still aren't done. So 
Because of busy work, Mandy. Every you know, like, got, like we said that earlier. Everybody has to have a job to do, so you have to. They have to create all these jobs by making you have to jump through more hoops. Because the more hoops you have to jump through, it's one more person that paperwork has to pass. The one more set of hands it has to pass through. <laughs> I get nervous too that just like things like talking about it, like criticizing it, will like flag uh, us for <laughs> for. Uh, um, I, I don't know if we've you know, we've I don't know approved. I don't know I don't know if we've reached that level of de- despotism yet. But <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, when we when I wrote the letter, because I mean, the way we met was I had an anarchist page, and he was liking my memes. <laughs> Sorry, memes, I had to throw that in there. Look at like <laughs> memes really do make the world go around. Look at that. <laughs> memes Bring, memes are the currency yeah. of the new world, man. Seriously, I'm telling you, man. Whatever. Look at that. I was and I am I meme curious. Poor. I'm sad. Go ahead, Shane. I was curious yeah. how the two of you got to know each other originally. It was through the Anarchista Musings page. He oh, was, it's all about yeah. memes, man. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was liking a bunch of memes, so I sent him a friend. I don't know. I think I sent him a friend request or I sent him a message or something. And um, But like, I was really careful um, to talk about that. You know, I said he, we have similar interests. Um, and we talked about how if they ask, you know, what those interests are in his interview, I was like, you don't don't bring up the it's anarchism, you know, talk about peace, talk about, <laughs> you know, um, talk about our, like we have similar parenting methods. Don't talk about unschooling. Don't talk, you know, like <laughs> um, not that he's, a, you know, he's he doesn't have biological children of his own. But he that was one of the things that we bonded on is how he treats children. Um so, but yeah, they, I mean, we were, we, we made sure that we didn't bring that up. You know, like <laughs> I said, we, we met through like similar interests on Facebook groups or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'd you be- know, cause you never, they could find any excuse. They could just, they could just literally say, we don't think that this is legitimate. Sure. And. and- that's yeah. that's another reason. With, with like I said, with, without even getting into the whole discussion of the, whether you know legal, illegal, the whole immigration thing, whatever. Like even even doing it that way is still ridiculous. Like it's not a very efficient system at all. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and because it, it is arbitrary, that's what it comes down to. Unfortunately, um, yeah, yeah. So you know that just makes it that just that just makes it that just makes it even more of a pain in the ass. But. Well, you know, like I said, at, at least he's here now, and uh, you know, yes. you're hopefully safe for the time being. Um, he's been super quiet, hasn't he? Huh? <laughs> Has he been sitting there the whole time? No, he's not. He's oh. not in here. He's playing video games. Oh. <laughs> nah. Yeah. <laughs> good man. Good man, Matt. Good man. Man after my own heart. Yeah, my own heart. I, uh, I actually got to meet him, I believe, at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Yes. Last year, it was great. <laughs> Lots of fun. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I think that's great that you not only met someone from New Zealand, but he's also an anarchist and you succeeded in getting him here to live with you. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. Our ceremony was beautiful. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty happy. So. Yeehaw. Well, yeah, we've been through, I mean, with what we've been through over the past year, um, I really think that we're in it. <laughs> well like i said after everything you went through i sure hope so <laughs> yep <laughs> otherwise that's one heck of a waste for somebody um yes <laughs> but anyway Next time we fight i'm just gonna be like we paid too much money for this <laughs> we can't do this <laughs> no. Well, no you, you could always hold, hold that over his head <laughs> listen motherfucker don't you step it out of line i make one call to ice your ass is all on the fucking boat all right get the fuck yep. <laughs> but I'm telling him that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a co-worker thought that I married someone from Mexico because um, I saw, I said something about my husband who just moved here from out of the country and he started saying like, oh, well, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I know some people from down there and, you know, they're really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, down there, he's you know not some wrong. people from New Zealand. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I well, okay, so I was like half listening to him, so I didn't feel comfortable responding because <laughs> I wasn't. I don't know what he said, honestly. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, well, you know, 
it it, it, ha- it happens, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, again, because most people assume that if they hear anything about you know immigration, most people because that's all that gets, ever gets talked about in the news, right? No matter yeah. who, no matter what side's talking about it, it's always it's it's for them. It's either well, I mean, other than like the refugees from the countries that the that the U.S. U.S. has bombed the fuck out of. Um, other than them, the most you know the most often talked about group is the Mexicans. So that's all people right. as, most people associate with it. Anybody who has just like a extremely basic knowledge of the whole. Uh, debate or whatever is just like oh yeah immigration it's got to be a mexican <laughs> the oh. only immigrants are mexicans yes. <laughs> people from canada are just snow mexicans snow mexicans yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh i hate those snow mexicans they're too fucking polite anyway <laughs> On that note, I think we should probably get wrapping up uh, before I start bashing more people and lose whatever audience we do have around the rest of the world. Because I know we do still actually. Have- Hi, mom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, probably, 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 probably one of our biggest fans of all of all is Mandy's mom. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yes, of course, of course, of and course. We thank you. You're not included in any of this, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, we we met, Shane mentioned the uh, MPL Fest. Are you guys, you guys going to be there this year? At the uh, yes. yeah, at, 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 in Michigan. Yeah, so um, we are planning to be there. Um, we don't have a summer schedule set up with the kids, so I'm not sure if the kids will be. Oh, but Matt and I will definitely be there. Well, that's awesome. cool. I mean, it'd be great if your kids could be there, but as long as you guys are there, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. So we got to hang out with you guys. Yeah. yeah, it might be nice to to come up without them one year, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've talked about it. I mean, and I, I was by myself, you know, I mean, I had the kids last year, but you know, I didn't have, I didn't have anybody else with me either time. But like, yeah, I mean, I've talked about the great experiences I've had both times, but you know, both with the kids and without you know, so. Are you all coming this year? Uh, I purchased four tickets to the to the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest before I bear the lead any further. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, people, uh, it is coming up. We're getting close in it, uh, close on it. It's uh, what Ju- uh, June twenty first through the twenty fifth at the Circle Pine Centers in Dalton, Michigan. And what's the website, Shane? Shane you know, mplfest.org. mplfest.org. Thank you. Yes, that is the website. Um, you can go check it out. I think the is the Bitcoin. Uh, discount still op- available i wonder i, I believe the bitcoin discount is still available and you can also get an early registration discount i think until may 1st oh nice so both if both of them are still open definitely a good time yeah I, I got the i only got one of the discounts i think i, I guess you can only get one i don't know i got the bitcoin discount um but yeah I, I purchased four tickets so uh as long as i'm not in jail i do plan on being there <laughs> um, <laughs> and i've got my tickets as well yeah and uh i mean after what happened today in court, I'm not sure. Um, I still have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I really hope I'm not here until June. Um, but uh, yeah, at the, the, at the very least I'll say for now is I, the pretrial hearings, which were only supposed to take a day, are now going to take another day. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I haven't even gotten past that stage of the whole thing. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, unless I'm in jail, that's my whole thing. I, I plan on being there. I purchased the tickets. I really hope to be moved out of New York by that point. So I only have like a four or five hour drive at the most <laughs> um, or less. Yeah, we're, two, we're two hours out. Okay. So hopefully be even less. Um, I'm still trying to figure out. Um, I'm still planning my trip out there. I, actually, I don't even think I've talked to you. Um, I, I talked to you last week and said I, I wanted to, I wanted to come out and I was going to set something up, but uh, I've decided to push that trip back for until the house is sold at least. Um, gotcha. Unfortunately, because I realized it's probably not the best idea to go on a trip uh, when all I have left is the money, little money in my credit card that I have, and if there's an emergency, and then I'm stuck out there with nothing because the credit card's now empty, um, <laughs> and me and Murder Dog are like, be- bo- you know, be- begging money to get home, and uh, and then and then we have, you know, then I'm even more screwed. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have to wait till that ends, and that's I still have no idea when that's going to happen either. So uh, but yeah, no nah, man, take risks, drive fast, take chances, man. Yeah. yeah. Getting a little too old for that shit, unfortunately, Andre. Nonsense. You'll be pulling a Velashka. Is that her name? No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I... 
please help me get home. I, 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 against the advice of multiple people, I hopped in a car with somebody I barely knew and drove all the way to Mexico. But I, did, even though I knew we were driving all the way to Mexico, I really didn't get that we were driving all the way to Mexico. And, and once we got there, it was a horrible experience. And I'm going to blame Jeff Berwick for everything because it's all his fucking fault. And he's a horrible human being, and you should hate yeah, him. Yeah, fuck and now Jeff please, Berwick. And now please give me money for playing for plane fare home edit i've now made it home but please you can continue to give me money to pay me back for the money i had to spend for the plane fare for the ill-advised trip that i did that i didn't did, that i ignored the advice of multiple people who told me not to do it for for the exact reasons of what happened to me god i hate that cunt i really <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I never nice. apologize for just get it out. Man. I never apologize for offensive language, but if I, if anybody is offended by the c word, I'm sorry. But I, re- I that applies to that what to that fucking wench. I'm sorry. I can't stand her. Um, so the c word has been used so much in my house since I met Matt. <laughs> well, it <laughs> means something there. different for it means <laughs> yes. something different for him. They're like the British. Yes. Cunt is a very different word over there. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's not any worse than like saying you're an asshole. Exactly. Yeah, he uses. He uses the phrase good cunt. What else, hon? Good cunt. He's, he's looking at me. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's a good cunt. She's not. She's just a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky cunt. Oh, my goodness. All right. I, I said we were going to end the show before we went off the yeah. rails, and then I ignored my And own. we're off the rails. <laughs> and we, we and I took us off the rails anyway. Excellent. Good job, Jay. All right. So anyway, <laughs> like I said, I think we should close this thing out now. <laughs> so, Mandy, thank you very much for coming on. It was great to have Thanks you back so on happy. after all this time. And, uh, you know, uh, once again, I'm, I'm glad that Matt, that, that, that things worked out for the time being. he's out here and I can't wait to, uh, hopefully see you guys in a couple of months. Well, I'll, I'll hopefully see you guys sooner than that. Um, but I definitely hope to see you guys, uh, in a couple of months at the MPL fest and anybody else who's listening, who hasn't gone or is close by or is thinking about it, buy your fucking tickets and get there. Cause we're going to have a hell of a time this year. So, all right. Uh, so anybody want to say anything in closing before we go, Mandy, start with you. Anything you got to say? No, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> Andre. Shane. I just, uh, I just wanted to tell her congratulations and that we're happy for her. Thank you. Yeah, same here. That's uh, that's about all I can say. But I'm, I'm glad everything worked out and he's here with you and you guys got it worked out. Like that's the, that's huge. That's huge, especially when you guys are you know in love with each other. It makes all the difference in the world being close to each other. Yeah, long distance relationships are one thing. Halfway around the world, like relationships. That's a whole another story. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. So thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Uh, Patreon is still up and running. Um, uh, we should, we should, by the time this episode airs, we should be back on track again. I know I missed one at this point when you're listening to this a couple of weeks back, um, but I should have fixed that by now and there should be multiple episodes to make up for that. Um, so thank you everybody who continues to donate. And if you haven't already, please consider doing so. It's still only a dollar a month to get the weekly bonus episodes. And if you want to donate a little more, we're definitely not opposed to that. We do have people, a couple of people to do that. And thank you very much for your service. Uh, there are extra perks available for that now. So go and check out the page, uh, Patreon slash Uh, slash seeds of liberty so anyway once again thank you everybody for listening and we will catch you next time peace peace in the middle east peace This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. 
Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, The Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support The Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.